Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The Department of Educational Resources, which includes a media section and an instructional section, was established at the University of Michigan School of Dentistry in 1969. One of the primary goals of the department was to aid in the design and development of an individualized curriculum. Each year through 1977, 30 incoming students will be a part of this program, which basically is a program that will permit a student to progress at his own rate and complete requirements for his DDS degree in less than four years. These are some of the achievements in development of an individualized program of instruction at the University of Michigan School of Dentistry. The goals of the project are to increase the quality of instructional materials, to provide an opportunity for students to progress at individual rates of learning, a responsiveness to student needs, and to establish the school as a source of effective validated instructional materials. Two years ago, the University of Michigan School of Dentistry demonstrated how various types of media are chosen and used in designing an individualized curriculum. Last year, some of the early achievements which were made in developing this individualized program were discussed. This presentation will demonstrate what steps are taken by the instructional specialists to coordinate the efforts of the faculty and media specialists to develop the validated instructional package. We'll take you from the initial decision to individualize a course through the validation process and touch upon some of the many problems that may occur. It is not our intention to give an in-depth report, but simply to familiarize you with a process which works for our particular program. To gain a better understanding of what we do, it is first important to be familiar with the structure of our department. Under a central chairman, the department divides into three basic areas. An instructional area, which contains two teams of instructional specialists, one team dealing with basic sciences, the other with preclinical and clinical courses. This area also contains a research and development team and computer-assisted instruction. Secondly, telecommunications, which includes a television studio, a photographic studio and darkroom, and a graphics area. And finally, the Student Learning Center, which is equipped with video cassette, sound slide, film strip, and computer terminals. To discuss the role of the instructional specialist, we talk with Tom Green, head of the Basic Sciences team, and Tess Kirby, head of the Preclinical and Clinical team. Individualizing the curriculum, there are obviously a whole series of steps you have to go through. And I think the logical place to start is at the beginning. And uh, so my first question would be then, where do you start? What's the beginning point for individualizing the curriculum or a course? Well, the first thing that we do for a course is to gather information on the course to find out exactly what type of creature we're dealing with. We want to gather information to determine the scope of the course and the content of the course. Mm -hmm. We will usually take the role of a student and attend the lectures along with the students and in some cases tape the course and have transcripts made from the tapes. This is audio tape. Yeah. Audio tapes, yes. right, and also take extensive notes during the lectures. In addition, we also read the textbook and then in laboratory courses we go into the laboratory and observe the students doing the certain procedures so that we can analyze what kinds of tasks that they have to do. I see. Okay, once you've gathered this information, what do you do with it at that point? Well, during the information gathering stage is what we also call a design stage. And at that point, we try and see what could possibly be the best sequencing format for these kinds of materials. And at that time, we also make media decisions. We make plans at this stage and talk with the instructor and give him our ideas on what we think would be the most effective way to individualize his course and then bounce it off of him, see what 
ideas and changes or modifications he would suggest and then come to an agreement about the rest of, the, of our work. In this design stage, we'll have an idea already of the content of the course since we've gathered the information. And we'll have some idea of the objectives that the instructor will have in mind. And the objectives themselves will often determine what media are necessary. If the student has to learn something that will require emotion, then of course we would need uh, TV. If the student needs one of the objectives is to learn how to distinguish between, say, a healthy and diseased tissue, then we would need some color. So perhaps color slides or a film strip would be appropriate. Mm. Tom, can you give me some examples, specific examples of the, of the types of things we're talking about? Sure. Um, a good example would be the applications of internal medicine to dentistry course, which Jim Fiker worked with Dr. Nemiroff on. They decided that they would need to show some of the conditions of a patient that would be in the doctor's office when he was working on him in the chair. And the best way to show this would be to have actual patients in the studio. You can't show them to the lecture hall, of course, so when they were available, they brought them into the school and made videotapes of these conditions. Additionally, conditions uh, a dentist might run into. And right. Heart problems that he might have to deal with while he has the patient there in the chair. What does he do in an emergency like that? Um, that's a good use of the television in that course. In the biochemistry course, most of the objectives were very straightforward. The student would have to m learn principles or memorize structures or learn to solve problems. In this case, we found that the best and most efficient means of teaching him these skills was just to use a plain black and white workbook where he would have plenty of problems to practice on and plenty of place places to do exercises in this memorization. A lot of times we need to use color discrimination in teaching some course. And it's far too expensive for us to have color prints in our books. Therefore, we use either slides along with an audio tape, or we also use film strips because they're very portable. It's an inexpensive, small film strip viewer that the student can take home with him and use in conjunction with a workbook. Now, the computer is used in a variety of ways. You can simulate a variety of situations which would be too complex. It's in analogous to Tom's example of bringing patients in when they are available. On the computer you can take a case and add a variety of components, ask the student to react, and it serves also a tutorial function because if the student does not react in a way that would be appropriate at that time, the patient in the computer can have the problem and it would not happen to a live patient. Mm -hmm. The student can be alerted to the problem and then branch through another learning situation. The computer also is used for testing. Uh, it's, we have random sample testing, and a variety of test questions can be put into the computer, say 500 questions for one specific course. A student can go down to our center and on the computer take essentially a test in the same area, say 15 different times, and never receive the same test. He also gets immediate feedback, and the computer can give him his percentage scoring. How about validation? We do generally two types of validation, a, a validation and ongoing validation as we're developing the materials. We will use a small group of students. You ongoing validation, <coughs> you check step by step as you right, progress. Right, as okay. we're preparing the materials. As we finish a module, for example, we would have a student go through the materials and get a preliminary idea of where there might be problems or where the, what the good points are. And then after this formative evaluation has taken place and we have a package of the completed materials, we'll use that package on a larger group of students, turn them loose with the whole package, and then analyze the, their use of the materials, both how they score on tests, for example, and also how they react to the materials, whether they like them, whether they enjoy studying from them, or whether they're not good. Okay, this is a whole series of things in gathering the information, 
deciding what sort of package it's to go in or a number of packages and then validating it step by step and then an overall validation of the material. Um, does it always run that smoothly? <laughs> do you have any problems? And what sort of problems do you have, if any? Yes. One of the large problems that we have is lack of faculty time. The faculty load here is heavy, and some of the gentlemen don't have very much time. So we can go through the data collection stage, the design stage, go into the production stage, and quite often the instructor simply doesn't have enough time available to get it done sort of quickly. Yeah. He's doing double duty, so to speak. At that. That's correct. If he's teaching a traditional class, as well as trying to individualize that class to provide an alternative for some of the students in that class, he is really doing double duty. <laughs> Speaking of traditional classes and traditional curriculum, are there problems with that as you're trying to individualize the curriculum? Yes, a couple come to mind. One, in an individualized curriculum that is truly individualized, the student should be able to start and continue on at his own pace until he is through. That means if he wants to finish within three years and is capable of doing so and has mastered all of the concepts that are laid out to be mastered, he should in fact be able to finish. A difficulty comes because instructor availability just isn't there for the summer months. For instance, if a student would finish a, pre a freshman preclinic course in we'll say March, and he still has a month left to go, it is fruitless for him to begin the sophomore preclinic course because he still has to take the summer rest. We don't have a truly flexible staffing yet. Mm -hmm. Another problem is that we have not been able to flow smoothly through the curriculum. We have tried to start with the freshman year and then proceed logically through the senior year. However, some courses, for instance, in the fall semester of the freshman year cannot be individualized yet. So it's a rather spotty project. Some courses are individualized, some courses are not. How much time is involved from the first step, gathering the information to the finished product for the student to use? On an average, we're talking about a year to 16 months. The first three or four months, we'll be gathering information while the class is going on. And then the next six months or so, six or eight months, would be the actual production of the material, writing of materials, production of the various media that are necessary for the package, and then doing the formative evaluation at the same time as we go along. So at the end of that first year, we've got the materials ready to use in a group of students. And then it takes about three or four additional months to have the students test them. Mm -hmm. and our, gather our validation information. Despite the problems, it's been a good program, hasn't it? I think so. It's been a lot of uh, good, favorable reaction from students and faculty as well. Tremendous reaction. Many faculty members who originally started with us to prepare things for the pilot college, which would consist of only 30 persons, uh, they appreciate the material so much that they insist that it be used for their whole class of 150. And many of the students who are not in the pilot group and do not have access to the materials are quite upset and will go to great lengths to get a hold of the materials. The individualization of a dental curriculum is a long process. It takes the combined effort of the faculty, the instructional specialist, the media specialist, and countless other support personnel. But the achievements, in most cases, are rewarding to both the faculty and the student. We hope that by viewing our program at the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, you have gained some insight into the needs of individualizing a dental program. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.